Hmm. The other X Division story this month is the Gauntlet match, which is uh, the opener for Victory Road. There's a bunch of videos at the start of the month where they announce a, uh, announce a bunch of competitors, but like most of the names that are in it are ultimately announced in advance. There's not too many surprises. Uh, your usual suspects, your your Sabins, your Shelleys, your Kazarians, your Michael Shanes, your Maggie Bats, Jarrell Clarks, Nasawa. <laughs> <laughs> the real stars. The usual suspects, Nasawa. <laughs> I love Nasawa. Well, this is the end of Nas- uh, Nasawa, so please do your Nasawa retrospective. I think Nasawa's been pretty good this run. I think he's had moments where like he was actually starting to get over with the crowds. Mm. I think it ended a little bit when they did the Florida, but like he was getting reactions. You keep saying this, even when he came out on the watch long, you're like, "Oh, big pop for Nasawa." And I'm like, mm. "I never said big pop. I said a pop." I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he's gonna retire in the Tokyo Dome, so fuck you. I guess no one else on this show is gonna do that. Hmm. Uh, so on the October 22nd impact, we begin building to this in earnest with a Sanjay Dutt and Chris Saban against Shazarian 10 minute time limit draw. Good match. Yeah, I, again, this makes me wish there was X Division tag titles. A weird one to choose to go to a draw. Like just, just pin Michael Shane, who cares? <laughs> or pin Sanjay. Or pin Saban, or pin Kazarian. You can pin any of the- Oh, pinning Saban, you say? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, no, not in some, by some scrub huh? Alex Shelley. Hmm? Hmm? No, don't fix the knowledge mm. typo. I'm very upset. Liam fixed the knowledge typo in the notes. <laughs> Thank you. It was misspelled on purpose. I saw a red line. And just... I had to fight the spell check to get the knowledge typo in there properly. <laughs> it updated twice. And I'm like, no, I'm misspelling it on purpose. <laughs> so if you go to patreon.com slash getting me or tnachat.com, you can see with the show notes, knowledge is misspelled. And that's on purpose. It's basically Garrett's TNA book. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a bit... You're watching it being written chapter at a time. It is 15 pages for this month. Uh, you also get an, an ad-free episode with the show notes, so there you go. If you're like, wow. I don't want to listen to these ads. You don't have to. For only a buck, you can subscribe. Patreon.com slash kidding me. This is Dutt returning from a dislocated elbow. He's been out for about a month. Yes, ever since he was chucked in a, a garbage can. Mm, so Saban hits the cradle shock, but time runs out. Larry Z makes the call, and he awards the match to Saban and Dutt. Which makes sense, because he was about to win. <laughs> it would be funny if he was about to win with his finish, and Larry's like, I pick Cesarian. <laughs> He's like, you know, Cesarian dominated about 70% of the match, though, so... Uh, October 29th, we had a mini gauntlet match where the winner would enter the X Division gauntlet at Victory Road at number 20. It featured Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, Frankie Cesarian, Sanjay Dutt, Michael Shane, and Sharkboy. I wish Sharkboy won. <laughs> Don't you just. Uh, this is a real quick match. Entrance every 45 seconds. Uh, Dot eliminated Frankie with a Rana. Uh, Michael Shane superkicked Dot out. Saban clotheslined Shane out. Shelly dubbed Sharkboy out, which left the Motor City Machine Guns to face off. Saban and Shelly. <gasps> Saban won with a cradle shock. Boo! And the crowd started booing and throwing garbage in the ring. Proving he is the superior Motor City Machine Gun once and for all. Just you wait till we get to that random X Division title match in like six years. And their 2022 match. <gasps> uh, which Saban wins. Um... <laughs> Damn it. No, Shelly wins. Someone Fuck, Shelly did win. <laughs> yes, it counts. I take it back. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Uh, Mike Tanay said a cursed line during this match. <laughs> yes. He said that this match is, in essence, a reverse battle royal. <laughs> Chills went through our spine. Which one? What are you talking about? It's a regular battle royal. People are thrown over the ropes. <laughs> he just wants to get the term out there for when they do it. <laughs> but Vince Russo, in that moment, sitting backstage... With a headset He's on. He's like, holy shit. He like pulled out a notepad and wrote down. Actually, oh, he ran to the nearest tattoo parlor and got the words <laughs> reverse ta- battle royal tattooed on his chest backwards so he could read it in a mirror. Like this is fucking memento. And he's like, someday, someday. <sighs> Listen, I can't wait to watch that and defend it. Uh, it's stupid, but it is. It's kind of the good kind of stupid. <laughs> Yeah. Saban pinned Shelly with the Cradle Shock, so he will enter the gauntlet, number 20. And he's pissed about it. <laughs> yeah, he does a promo on the next show. So the next show has a four-way match where the loser, the person pinned, will enter the gauntlet, number one. And then you can be think, geez, it's really unfair to the people that are in this match. They have nothing, they have no reward. But to be fair, they did think about that. The people were drawn at random. Yeah. So yeah, Saban does a promo backstage where he's like, I have to share the ring with 19 other guys at this pay-per-view, this should be the Chris Saban show, which I do agree with the sentiment. Yeah. 
I don't know about that. Shazarian walk in, there's like, it's a conspiracy. All the names in that pod say Kazarian. You might as well just pull out the last name. Franchise pulls out the last name and he's like, ooh, what a surprise. Well, actually, I think he says they all say Michael Shane. Because he thinks he's going to be put in there to fight Kazarian. Yeah. So the, either way, it's a conspiracy against them and Franchise is surprised at who the final man in the match is. It's Michael Shane. <laughs> It'd be really funny if he's like, whoa, then it just was Michael Shane. So Frankie Kazarian, Amazing Red, Matt Seidel, and the debuting Spanky faced off in a four-way with the loser entering the gauntlet number one. I thought Spanky looked good here. Well, the match is 90 seconds. I meant like physically. He was in good shape, wearing some shorts. Yeah, good shape, had some good gear. He didn't have the shorts, he had um, the regular trunks. Did he? The pay-per-view with the shorts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I was excited for Spanky, and then I was like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't do much. <laughs> no, this is it. But you're, you're not going to get any more Spanky until 2010. <laughs> so I'm curious if there was bigger plans? I don't know. I think they just wanted a surprise for the gauntlet, and he's the guy with a name. Okay. Because th- there was another name they were looking to get for the gauntlet. You might have heard of him. His name is Jushin Liger. <laughs> I'm unfamiliar. Uh, but they couldn't get him, so... They were looking for people for the gauntlet. Shane tried to interfere, accidentally cost Kaz the match as Spanky wins with the sliced bread number two. He's through my favorite move in wrestling. And he will be in the gauntlet. He gets nothing for winning this match, but Frankie will enter the gauntlet number one for losing. He gets momentum. That's true. The, the match was 90 seconds long. <laughs> momentum. Which brings us to the opening match of Victory Road. The best match on the show. Uh, it probably was. This match rocks. I love this match. No, probably. I'm looking at your ratings. That's true. I did give it four stars, and I gave two other matches three and a quarter, three quarter stars. So, yeah, I think this match is great. We were talking about it on the watch-along. This feels like the perfect kind of opener for what could potentially be a bunch of new first-time fans for the company. Yeah, so Hector Garza defeats Kazarian, Sanjay Dutt, Puma, debuting. Uh, Old TJ Perkins over here. Looked uh, good. I thought he he would have been a good addition for more stuff. I think he sticks around more than I think. Uh, He's not like a regular, but he does pop up a bunch. Yeah, he does like an X Cup. Yeah, he does like 06 X Cup. Does he do the 2008 X Cup? Either way, he's he's around. Garrett, I found a six-sided ring on eBay. (laughs) I still have my six-sided ring, thank you very much. Oh, did it come with an exclusive AJ Styles? Is it the red one? Yeah. Yeah, I have the red AJ too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, don't you question. Can you, okay, if you had to guess, which... Five wrestlers, six wrestlers are on the box. Can you remember what it is? Uh, Jeff Jarrett. No. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, Monty. No. Who's this? AJ. No. What? what? Who's on this box? Ron Killings. Yeah. The Naturals. Of course. Shazari. Naturally. Elix Skipper. Those are the six people that first come to mind when you think six sided rings. So, yeah, sure. And on the back, we have AJ. These are the actual action figures on the back. The front is a picture. On the back, we have AJ Styles, Abyss, in like his weird uh, tribal tattoo side gear. Oh, no. Uh, We have Jeff Hardy. How gutted do you think Abyss is that he took the action figure sample photos the day he had that gear? (laughs) I don't mind that gear. You hate it way more than me. Terrible gear. Raven, Jeff Jarrett with NWA title. Mm, Naturally. And... Shark boy. Give me a shell, yeah. So if you want that, it's only $299 Australian. Shark boy's a very smart person to put in like the first figure run. He's a very distinctive action, action figure. Oh. And uh, great for... Uh, he's Man, he's getting royalties for days on this year. Those Marvel figures rule too. I never. I don't think I have any of them. I have the later ones. Uh, so there's Gauntlet. Hector Guards are defeated. Kazarian, Sanjay, Puma, L.A. Park, Jarrell Clark, Miyamoto, Michael Shane, Nasawa, Mikey Bats, Alex Shelley, Matt Seidel, Sonny Siaki, Jason Cross, Sharkboy, Psychosis, D-Ray 3000, Amazing Red Spanky, and Chris Sabin in a 20-man X Division Gauntlet match. It came down to Kazarian and Garza as the final two, with Kaz going coast to coast because he entered first, but Garza rolled him up for the win. Yeah, after doing all these crazy fucking moves, you get the roll-up win. But it's really good to see Hector Garza again. Dude is awesome. Love him whenever he shows up. Yeah, so uh, Garza's getting a push. He, he looks like a star, and they know it. Yeah, whenever he shows up, he always uh, he always impresses very quickly. So this match was the first time I've seen Sonny Siaki. <laughs> like, like, when I was watching TNA for the first time, I was popping in my DVDs, and I had not seen Sonny Siaki before when I saw this match. And there's a 60 second stretch when he comes out where he's throwing dudes around with Northern Light suplexes, with throwing Samoan drops, with 
pop up power slams. Like <laughs> he seems like the biggest badass ever. So the first time I saw him, I was like, this dude just can't miss. He's going to be the biggest star in the world. Look at him throwing these dudes around. It's insane. But then you watch a regular Sonic Siaki match and you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> he's actually quite boring. Yeah. Um. Well, that's like the dude should have like just been a power junior. That's very clear from what we've seen. And he's all of his best stuff is when he's in the X Division and he's just throwing dudes around. Which they just never did. They just constantly put him in the ring with like David Young. <laughs> Mm. What are you doing? Uh, Shelly did the injured shtick on the floor, which was all just to eliminate Matt Seidel. <laughs> I appreciate the commitment to that bit. I think his plan was to do it for more, but Seidel just ruined it. <laughs> That's not a very good plan then. Goldilocks would have planned that much better. Yeah. Saber did a cool overhead German onto Kaz off the top rope, and then they landed on Garza and rocked. Uh, so yeah, Garza wins. 